Okay, we're going to talk about how to add a profile, how to add a column, and then even a custom column to your Wireshark so we can use that information to measure network response time. So the easy way to create a new profile is if you click down where it says profile default in the bottom of your, your window there, and you right click that and say manage profiles, it opens up this Wireshark manage profiles. Uh, we can even create a new one. We can right click there and say new profile and I can create that from my existing default profile. Whoa, look out. Take my default profile and I'm going to create a new pro profile and call it HTTP and I'll click OK there. So I now have a new HTTP profile. It's down in my bottom right of my screen. It says profile now HTTP and that's going to use all of the things that I had created in my default profile. Now I already had a relative time column and some other columns but I'll show you how to add that column and even a custom column simply by clicking on the little screwdriver wrench, edit preferences, go to columns, and again, you'll notice I have delta time, relative time. I have some other columns that you probably don't have, but you can easily add. Packet length and bytes, cumulative bytes. So to add this relative time column, it's as simple as clicking add. Click the new column. Name it. Relative time. Press enter. Now where it says number, in the bottom of your window here, we're going to drop that drop down and choose relative time. Now we have that, we'll just pick that and move it up. So I move it up, now I have two relative times and I really don't need that, but you've now got that relative time column in your Wireshark. And we're going to change this into a custom one that says HTTP response codes. So now the easy way to do that would be on yours. You're going to click add a new one. I'm just going to reuse the one here and name it HTTP response code. And in the drop down, I'm going to choose custom. So go up, find custom. And it gives me this field name, which is really the filter name. And if we type in HTTP.RES, you'll notice response starts to come up. And I'm just going to pick response code. That's the one I want. It turns green. And you notice it says custom HTTP response code there. So I now have a couple of new columns within my Wireshark decode and I can use that information now to quickly look for specific problems and I'm going to highlight this and right click it and say align it to the center so it makes it easy to see. Now let's get back into the basic troubleshooting process. So I find a sync request here port 1638 to 80. I'm going to right click that conversation filter for TCP. We always troubleshoot socket circuit sessions and we notice you know that starts there's our sync request sync act act TCP three-way handshake time. Let's time that simply by now right clicking on the first packet setting your relative time reference and you notice that sets your time reference to zero there. We see it takes six milliseconds to start our TCP connection. So there's our network round trip time and we can validate that or vindicate that simply by doing the same process with the GET. Set my reference on the GET request by right clicking, set my time reference toggle, and I see the ACK from the server 5 milliseconds. So network round trip time 6 milliseconds or 5 milliseconds to get the TCP ACK from the TCP stack for the request. So, you know, 5, 6 milliseconds, network round trip time. Hey, what's a millisecond among friends? We've proved that the network is pretty darn quick. It's not a network issue. But hey, look right here. We see the GET. 
we see the application respond 900 milliseconds later almost a second later the 200 is the good application response so if someone were complaining this was slow we could easily say well the slow is coming from the application or server processing trying to find the content that it's returning here almost a second later so I hope that gives you some good information on how to use your Wireshark uh, and time, network response time things. One last final trick is to clear that information or that filter that we automatically built and now sort on your response codes. 200s are good if you know the application response codes. 200 OK is, you know, found the content, that's good. Uh, let's see if we got any bad ones in here. Go towards the bottom and yes, we see some 500s. Those are never good. Internal server errors. So we can easily look for response codes now coming back from the application in HTTP. You know, 304 is is use what you've you've got. It's it's cached in your local machine on the browser. 404s, we talked about that in a previous one not a good re response code that the content you're looking for was not found and 500s obviously you know internal server error so there's an easy way using your Wireshark to add some columns create a new profile and look for application response codes if you have any of these response codes that are aired you know talk to your app developers at that point and figure out what you can do to get rid of them so thanks, hope that helps.